In this video, we will explore what a container is and how Docker implements a technology to run containers. A traditional instance of a MySQL database can require a lot of overhead to initially set up, and then requires the same overhead each time an instance of the database needs to be replicated. In a traditional deployment, the MySQL instance shares resources with any other applications that are on the same host meaning the database and the entire application is less scalable. And if new instances need to be spun up, the entire arduous process needs to be started again with an increased risk of error because the process is not automated. In an ideal world, a MySQL instance would run in isolation with all of its dependencies so that its resources could be fine-tuned and additional instances of the database could be spun up automatically with a simple command. Through the power of containers and facilitated by Docker, it is possible to allow an operating system process to run isolated from other processes hosted by the same operating system and quickly scale and create new instances of an application in a repeatable fashion. The container runtime environment creates an execution environment where a containerized application will not have access to any file, device, socket, or process outside of its own container. It appears to the application as if it is running alone inside of its own operating system installation. If the application needs something from the outside, it must open a network connection as if it were on a different server. Each container actually gets an exclusive virtual network interface and private IP address. Else, it would not be able to access or be accessed by the outside world. This is why many people look at containers as a kind of lightweight virtualization. Like virtual machines, containers are a way to deploy an application and its dependencies as self-contained units without interference and conflicts caused by other applications and their dependencies, sharing the same operating system installation. But while virtual machines need a complete operating system image with kernel, device drivers, and commands to manage hardware, a container needs only the subset directly used by the application without administrative commands and libraries. The following diagram illustrates two applications running on the same server using a traditional operating system and using containers. We see on the left that applications A and B are running on the same operating system image, sharing various libraries. On the right, we see that the applications have been encapsulated and isolated into their own container, with each having its own copy of libraries while sharing the underlying operating system image. Docker provides an easy command line interface and API to create and manage containers. Instead of manually issuing dozens of complicated commands to configure namespaces, C groups, SE Linux configurations, and other capabilities, Docker does that with a single easy to use command. Besides creating and managing containers, Docker also provides a standard container image format which is actually a tar file containing the entire container file system with all libraries, commands, and working directories used by the application, plus metadata describing the image itself. Docker container images are immutable. A new container image can be created from an existing one with a custom image as required. The file system of a container image is a series of layered file systems. In a MySQL container, for example, the image for the database instance could include a base operating system such as RHEL 7, the MySQL server installed, and scripts to create the database infrastructure and populate it with data. The RHEL 7 operating system would most likely be stored on a shared file system layer that is used by many different containers. Docker container images are stored in central repositories known as image registries. These registries provide a standard HTTP-based protocol for storing and retrieving container images. One of the most common registries is provided by Docker Hub, 
it is possible to create public and private registries. In the next video, we will explore the Docker commands that allow us to manipulate Docker container images.